Dram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As per usual, a big thank you to everybody that watched last week's episode of the show, liked, commented, all that kind of stuff. Um, checking the uh, the YouTube statistics the other day, uh, I believe it was the second most watched episode of the show within the first five days of it being put up on YouTube. So very, very big thank you to uh, everybody that uh, that did indeed watch it and hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, also, a even bigger thank you to you guys that uh, put your hand in your pocket and purchased one of our bottlings of Stoysha. Again, very, very much appreciated. They should probably all be with you now, I would have thought. There may be one or two that uh, won't get there until Monday, but hopefully when they do get to you, you'll enjoy the liquid as much as I did. And uh, obviously, if you are of the persuasion like myself, try before you buy if possible. Uh, don't forget, uh, I'll be at the uh, uh, Nottingham Whiskey Festival on the 19th of November with said bottling, uh, which you can um, you can try, and then hopefully it will uh, impress you enough to want to buy a bottle. So anyway, yes, um, big thank you f to everybody for watching last week's episode of the show. Um, this week's episode of the show, I thought it was about time to do an episode of the show on Springbank, having a, a look back through the past episodes of the show, certainly for this year, uh, I realised it was actually mid last year was the last time I did an episode of the show on Springbank, so I thought well overdue, um, and <laughs> they get the views, <laughs> so uh, it, that's always really cool, and you know, I do enjoy uh, reviewing um, the, the juice from Springbank, and uh, uh, a big thank you to a couple of my um, friends stroke uh, customers uh, in Sunderland and uh, Guy Dutton for uh, some of the samples for this week's episode of the show, a couple of them came from the uh, uh, sort of archive samples from uh, the uh, uh, now defunct Independent Bottlers Challenge and even, even if the Independent Bottlers Challenge was still going I don't think independent bottling companies would be putting forward sort of old bottlings of Springbank as, uh, and or certainly not opening them to sample to put into uh, competitions shall we say that <laughs> The scramble for for anything sort of Springbank related is so is so nuts now that uh, you know, the the bottlers just w wouldn't do that. So a uh, um, bit of a bit of a blast from the past and probably not to be repeated, I guess. Anyway, um, not really very much to say on Springbank that I haven't said several times over. So let's just take a look at today's. Let's let's take a seat. Let's Okay, so first we're going to kick off with a bourbon aged, a fresh bourbon barrel bottling. This is a nine-year-old cage bottling, uh, warehouse five rotation, five to six. Uh, it was distilled in June of 2011, bottled in April 2021 at the not inconsiderable uh, ABV of 60%. Oh, nothing like starting with a bang. Talking of starting with a bang, the last last whiskey tasting evening I did, I think we, I think I kicked it off with a, a, a hefty car strength bottling, and sometimes it's good fun to do that. You know, it sort of gets you going straight from the, the word go. Um, obviously, sometimes it, it can be a bit backfire a bit because if the second sample is you know forty percent for argument's sake, um, it can suddenly seem completely and utterly watery in comparison. But sometimes it's good to just sort of uh, shake things up a little bit, isn't it? Anyway, so uh, nine-year-old fresh bourbon barrel. Bottling number two is a 15-year-old Springbank Society bottling uh, aged in a fresh port hoggy. Uh, this was distilled in May of 2005, bottled in September of 2018 at 56.2%. Uh, bottling number three, we're sort of slowly going down the ABVs and Duncan Douglas Lang Old Particular 18 year old bottled 48.4. It's a refill sherry butt, a single refill sherry butt. Uh, bottling code or um, cast number DL10737, distilled in October of 1996 and bottled in February of 2015. Dean, I think I've reviewed this particular bottling in the past, uh, many, many years ago, um, probably closer to about 2015, I would imagine, anyway, um, so that's number three. Uh, number four, number four is kind of like a, a late substitution, I originally had intended to taste a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society sample, which I 
thought was Springbank, but I wasn't entirely sure. So I had to do a quick bit of research or checking of my tasting notes, and it turned out it was actually Glen Scotia. So I thought, ooh, so I needed a, a substitute. Um, <laughs> so the substitute is a vintage malt whiskey company, Cooper's Choice, 18-year-old. Uh, it's a single refill sherry cast, number 116, distilled in May of 1998 and bottled in 2016. Penultimate bottling is a Duncan Taylor Octave Springbank. Uh, it's a 22-year-old um, cast number, or sherry octave finish, uh, cast number 639909. I've often wondered when you get finished independent bottlings, um, what is the cast number referencing? Is the cast number referencing the original, for example, Bourbon Hogshead or Bourbon Barrel or whatever, or is it the, the reference number of the finishing cask? I'm guessing it's probably the, the former, uh, but you never know. Anyway, so uh, distilled in 1994, bottled in 2017, like I said, 22 years old, 50.7%. And the final bottling of this afternoon is a little bit older. It's a 23-year-old uh, uh, Springbank bottled by Ushki. No idea who they are. Never had any um, any dealings with them. That sample was kindly given to me by uh, by Ian. Uh, so this is Sherry Butt number 583, uh, finished in a PX octave. Any Springbank character going to be left after that? Hmm. I have no idea. Anyway, distilled in October of 1996, bottled in September of 2020 at 53.1%. I've often kind of wondered about Springbank and Sherry, and is, is it a case of um, Springbank has, you know, the, the, the character to, to withstand a lot of Sherry, or is it just that we're kind of so used to seeing Springbank uh, aged in Sherry? Um, probably a bit of both, I imagine, but um, anyway, uh, as you well know, I've have a more of a tendency to enjoy my spring bank when it's been aged in American oak and that's exactly what we're going to kick off and with. every morning kept saying to yourself right okay so let's kick off with the cage bottling nine-year-old let's see what the nose gives us on this end shall we very salty uh, quite citric definite alcohol prickle you can smell that alcohol the technical term for this nose is it's tighter than a gnat's chuff. Um, and if you don't know what that is, you can probably guess. Um, it's a little bit of oily vanilla, a little bit of um, uh, apricot, some straw, marzipan, but it is tight. I mean, that alcohol is kind of got it by the nuts, as they say. Um, and um, yeah, like I said, tighter than a gnat's chuff. Let's see what the palette gives us. A little bit of peat on the palate. Didn't really get an awful lot on the nose. Getting a hell of a lot of alcohol. I mean, it is just, ooh, mother. Um, yeah, that's ooh, um, really intense. Um, oh, you've got to love that intensity. Straw-like, sort of um, tight American oak, sort of grippy tannins, uh, a little bit of apricot, a little bit of fish oil. Um, and like I said, Mm, nice level of peatiness, um, which really wasn't quite evident on the nose, but it's certainly evident on the palate. Um, quite a drying, straw-like kind of finish. Let's put a <laughs> fair amount of water with that because it's gonna, it'll take it. Um, believe you me. Um, let's see what the nose gives us now. Then that's kind of calmed everything down a little bit. So we're getting quite a heavy, oily sort of marzipan-y kind of nose toffee malt obvious the fresh bourbon is um pretty noticeable um but again spring bank just does wood i mean you know shouldn't that be a a, a, a title of a porn film possibly spring bank does wood um i don't know where these things come from um anyway yeah so bit biscuity bit whiny um Sort of almost kind of, let's say, marzipani pastry kind of note. I mean, that really is intense. I mean, lovely nose for a nine-year-old. Um, this was, if you've had a bottle of this particular cage bottling, then, hmm, see what the pass on. Like. 
softer, a little lighter, a little more elegance on the palette, but still quite weighty, apricot, dried fruit, um, straw. Peat has kind of slumped off again, um, as often is the case when you put a little drop of water with um, whiskey that has just a smidgen of peat, it tends to sort of <laughs> disappear off. Um, lovely length, oily, a um, little bit of bitterness, a little bit of tart citrus, uh, fish oils on the finish. Um, just an absolute classic spring bank in my, my opinion, you know. Um, really complex um, and it just shows all the character of the uh, of the spirit and with a reasonable amount of oak but you know that the oak even though being a fresh bourbon barrel is kind of kept under control should we say so um that was good that was good stuff <laughs> Right, so let's move on to the Springbank Society bottling. So, a uh, 15 year old fresh port hoggy. Let's see what the nose gives on this end. Again, noticeable alcohol. Um, lots of porty fruit, sort of black currant, black cherry. It's got a slight sort of jamminess, syrupy jammy kind of axis thing going on. There's some gritty tannin, some fish oil. A little bit of vanilla just underneath. Um, a little tight, but you know, it's certainly an appealing nose. It's aromatic, it's very heavy on the port, it's very sweet and fruity. Um, it's kind of an easy going sort of kind of nose with a, a little herbal note just creeping in and possibly a touch of sort of almost iodine. Um, Overall, that's that's a lovely nose, um, delightful, um, and again the spirit is standing up pretty well to um, to the port. So that's up. Quite port dominated again. Um, sweet, juicy, black currant. Um, black cherry fruit, a little bit of syrup, a touch of spice, some tannin, a little bit of grip on the mid palate, slightly masked on the finish with a little bit of an astringent note just coming in, just offsetting that kind of um, that sweet black fruit. Um, there's a bit of an edge to it uh, on the finish, which is quite quite pleasant, and it's, it I think it's quite quite pleasantly balanced. Um, a little bit of tar on the aftertaste and uh, yeah maybe I think in this instance it's there's not the biggest amount of Springbank character um, and the alcohol is kind of balancing up the sweetness of the port um, I think it's gonna be interesting to see if we dial down that alcohol what what will happen will it get sweeter um, actually the port influence seems to be a lot less now I'm getting a lot more spirit character fishy oily apricot, a little bit of vanilla, some citrus, some salt, yeah it's the more you sniff it the more the port just does not seem to actually be influencing it and I, I must admit it's very it's pretty unusual I don't often come across it where a wholly sort of uh, a, you know port aged um, spirit kind of loses so much of the port character or the 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 the, the wood character just by dilution um, so that is quite unusual Let's see what passes like similar to the palate uh, or similar to the nose I should say the port character it kind of it's almost practically disappeared. It does come back a little bit on the finish with a little bit of sort of black fruit, dried fruit. Um, but it's all more about the spirit and it's a little soft. It's a, mm, if I'm being really, really critical, a little watery um, with, you know, it's got some nice apricot, uh, a little bit of fish oil, some salt. It does kind of go a little watery and a wall kind of on the mid palate before the sort of the uh, that the port does kind of return on the aftertaste but overall i think that's a really enjoyable bottling and uh, like i said it's very rare you come across a bottling that really is noticeably different and noticeably loses so much wood character 
uh, when you dilute it. But yeah, that's that's whiskey for you. Right, okay, so let's move on to the old particular 18 year old. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Oh, this is, oh, refill sherry. I mean, that is gorgeous. Um, again, almost tropical. I mean, that's, that's really unusual for Springbank. Um, the sherry character is very subtle. It's sitting in the background. There's some dried fruit. But it's got some lovely sort of citric notes, a touch of dusty peat. Um, mm, it's got some almost sawdusty sort of aged um, vanillin character. Um, but I'll tell you what, I mean, that the influence of, of, the, of the sherry is very, very subtle here. Um, and it's almost, it almost feels like a finish. Um, because it's that light and I'm getting a lot of almost American oak character. It's possible that this was a seasoned, uh, no it was a sherry but um, it's possible it might have been a, a seasoned American oak but unlikely I suppose with if it was a, a barrel then you know it possibly more likely to be a seasoned barrel but if it's a butt it's possibly more than likely going to be European oak. Um, doesn't quite have the sort of grip of European oak. I mean, it, it may well be a sort of um, a seasoned cast or a sort of a cast off uh, actual sherry butt possibly, but um, either, anyway, either way, I'm rambling. It's, it's a lovely nose. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I tell you what, this sat on the shelf for years. I got six bottles of it. I mean, I know I'm not supposed to sort of talk about um, uh, my employer and of course everything I do say today in today's episode of the show is totally my own um, waffle and it doesn't have any bearing or waffle with regards to the company that employs me um, but this sat on the shelf for quite some time and it wasn't an expensive 18 certainly not by the time I think Ian purchased the last bottle off me um, which was a bit of a surprise because obviously nowadays if this probably wouldn't have reached the the shelf but anyway Gorgeous. Let's see what the powers are. That is a lovely uh, finish. It's absolutely divine. Really comes through with, an, like I said, almost dusty American oak, sawdusty finish. Um, opens up with a little bit more sherry dried fruit. But again, like I said, it's very subtle. It's, it's got lots of apricot, um, salt, fish oils. Um, not quite so tropical um, because the sherry character is a little bit more noticeable. It's sort of taking the edge off that sort of overt fruitiness. And it's like I said, fruit, <laughs> tropical fruit, spring bank. Mm. Ugh, never come across that one before. Well, I might have done, but... Anyway, it's not. It's, uh, let's put it this way: Springbank is not exactly synonymous with big tropical fruit. Not that this has got a huge amount. Yeah, I'm. I, I get. I'm really rambling. Um. Anyway. Um. Kind of coming back to the lovely length. A little bit of straw on the on the aftertaste. Um. Maybe a little bit of peat. Mm, yes. More kind of distant smoke. It's really harmonious. It's a bloody good whiskey at the end of the day. And um. Yeah. Right, okay, so let's move on to the uh, substitute, uh, or the, uh, uh, the Cooper's Choice 18 year old. Let's see what uh, the nose gives us on this. Now, this is completely different to uh, the um, old particular bottling. It's a lot more gritty sherry. Um, although, like I said, refilled sherry cask, this. It almost sort of reminds me of first fill. It's not quite as overt and blanketing, but it's still gritty, obvious Oloroso, a little bit of walnut, prune. Nice maturity, it's okay. Um, I don't think it has the complexity of the old particular bottling. Um, it's a little bit of, of treacle, bovril. I'm not getting a, the, the, a huge amount of, of Springbank character. There's a a little bit of oiliness possibly but 
it's certainly a lot more sherry orientated than um, the previous bottling even though it's a refill sherry cask now this I would imagine is probably um, more likely to be a seasoned cask uh, it just it just feels a lot fresher on the sherry character um, anyway let's see what passes like I mean it's okay it's pleasant um, it probably would have cost you an arm and a leg when it was released um, and is an arm and a leg okay for pleasant mm, good question um, it's soft it's not particularly gritty it's quite treacly it's whiny it's quite heavily sherried um, there's a touch of fish oil a little bit of tar maybe um, bit of earth Good length. I mean, it's not a bad whiskey, but you know, coming after the old particular bottling. I mean, the old particular bottling beats that hands down for complexity. Um, this is more sherry orientated, less complex, um, less interesting, um, but nevertheless, it's clean sherry. It's good, um, but it really doesn't kind of excite me as much as the um, old particular bottle. So let's move on to the Octave Springbank. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Obviously more in common with the uh, the Cooper's Choice bottling because of the overt sherry character. It's very luscious. It's quite mature. It's got that sort of almost kind of cognac-esque dried fruit kind of character. Um, a little bit of a herbal note. Lots of sweet dried fruit. A touch of palmer violets, prune, tar, walnut, salt. Again, we're not really talking a huge amount of distillery character here. But it's beautifully balanced for an old or moderately old sherried um, spring bank, I think. Very soft, very supple. It's it, supple, not supple. <laughs> it's certainly not supple whatsoever. Um, it's it's giant sort of oloroso fruit and um, not quite fruit and nut bar, but um, you know, it's not bad. I mean, you know, there's there's people that will wet themselves over this. Um, not me, it has to be said. But anyway, let's see what pops up. Good length, a little bit of bitterness, bit of tannin coming through on the, on the aftertaste. Soft, treacly, um, lovely maturity, sort of malty, licorice, um, dark fruits, a little bit of salt, a little bit of fishiness, um, no real peat. Um, like I say, pretty much all about the, the, the sherry uh, on, on this particular bottling. It's, it's an impressive relatively well-aged spring bank it has to be said it doesn't kind of quite have the character and the complexity again of the old particular bottling because the sherry is a little bit heavier um, but it's still a lovely whiskey absolutely no doubt about that whatsoever but again you know if I'm ranking them the, the, the old particular bottling really just stands head and shoulders above it as To the final bottling of the day, the Uski um, 23 year old. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? That's an intense nose, that's loaded with PX character. Um, pruny, whiny, dried fruits, treacle, tar, quite heavily peated in actual fact. I'm getting a lot of peat, um, probably the most peat out of all of these bottlings. Um, it's got a kind of sub armagnac -y kind of dark, sort of edgy dried fruits kind of character. Um, a little bit of pecan, almond, lots of raisinated fruit, a little bit of fish oil. But again, we're not looking at an awful lot of distillery capital. I'm bloody well expecting it, you know, sort of, you know, 
sherry butt finish it in a PX quarter uh, or octave. Um, yeah, you are kind of like, um, well, I'm not, not going to expect an awful lot of distillery character coming out after that, even given the spring back. And, you know, uh, the amount of sort of independents that basically do this to sort of, you know, really like elegant whiskies like Glen Lossie and stuff like that, and you just think, what the hell is the point? I mean, you know, even something like Springbank or Linkwood or, you know, Blair Athol is going to sort of like have a hard job standing up to sort of being hammered by Sherry and you're expecting something like sort of Glen Lossie or Tea and Inage or something like that to, to handle it. No, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen at all. Anyway, it's a good nose. Uh, again, you know, if you love your big Sherry um, Springers, then, um, yeah, you're going to wet yourself over this. To me, like I said, Mm, anyway, let's see what on. Like the nose, loads and loads of PX, treacle, wine, licorice, a bit of burnt, burnt treacle, um, wet. I was almost about to say wet dog, but it's not wet dog. It's wet. <laughs> I'm not not tasting Chenin Blanc. Um, wet tar, um, licorice, prunes, fig, dark fruit, seeped fruit, um, a little bit of spice. Lovely finish, lovely aftertaste. I mean, absolute pure, almost ninety percent cocoa, dark chocolate finish. I mean, that is abs. I, I mean, I buy that just for that. I mean, the finish is absolutely gorgeous. All right, okay. We're, we're again, you know, not a great deal of distillery character. There's a sort of like a kind of like a, an inference of um, salty, fishy notes, um, but it really is all about the PX. Um, I'll put a little drop of water with it and see whether that actually um, does anything to it or not. Um, chances are probably not. Actually, I, I am quite wrong. Um, it does happen. I mean, you know, whoa, you know, um, yeah. Oh, do I get a, a smidgen of sulphur there? Um, I don't ever remember that from the first time I tasted that. That is, there is definitely some sulphur there. Uh, I am sorry. But it's lightened the sherry a bit. I'm getting a little bit more marzipan salt, a little bit more distillery character. Um, is there some fruit there? I think I'm picking up maybe pineapple. Um, quite toasty still. Oh, big on sulphur. Um, I'm trying to ignore the sulphur and trying to get below it, and um, that's a real shame. Um, like I said, I don't ever, I don't remember that from the first time I tasted it that uh, they brought out some sulphur notes and. Um, Maybe it's my sulphur radar is kind of uh, more attuned today. I don't know. Anyway, let's see what the pass like. A little bit more balanced on the finish, on the palate, sorry. Um, there's a little bit of grit on, you know, gritty tannin on, 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 on the finish. It kind of starts off with a bit of sort of like mm, yeah it's kind of building up a little bit it has to be said again not quite so much sherry the sherry is obviously still there but i am getting a little bit of distillery character now i'm getting a little bit of fish oils and 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 apricot um touch of treacle again wood smoke tar there is this kind of note in the background that is kind of almost sulfury um, and again, like I said, uh, I think my sulfur radar is probably sort of, you know, going off um, today, but because uh, I don't remember it being like that. And there is that sort of sulfury metallic kind of note just in the in the background. Um, I think maybe a lot of people who, who aren't quite so susceptible to sulfur would probably not pick it up because it is relatively supple. But once you, it's like anything, once you kind of key in on a specific note whether it's fruit or sort of sulfur or what have you it's kind of like yeah you just it's there it's kind of like you know gonna never gonna go away and and it kind of has marred the finish a little bit on that um and yes i'm probably being overly critical um but 
That's my job at the end of the day. Alright, okay, so that's on today's episode of the show. Like I say, firstly, big thank you to um, Ian and Guy for the samples, or some of the samples for today's episode of the show. Um, very, very much appreciate. These days, obviously, um, the distillery no longer send me samples, so um, getting hold of um, Springbank samples is all, it, it was all basically down to the largesse of uh, one's customers at the end of the day, so a big thank you to that. Um, the uh, cage bottling, absolutely gorgeous. My cup of tea. I mean, I know you're going to go in there, well, you don't like sherry, but I do like sherry because the the old particular bottling was probably bottling of the afternoon but you know hats off to that young spring bang you know effusive um and just absolutely gorgeous at the end of the day um the uh, society port bottling a very heavily port influenced um like i said n very rarely have i come across a bottling that changes so dramatically when you put a little drop of water with it and um that's part of the fun of whiskey. I mean, it wasn't a bad bottling at the end of the day, it has to be said. And like I said, standout bottling was the old particular 18. Gorgeously balanced, almost tropical fruit. I mean, you know, it's just what, you know, they broke the mould when, when they distilled this cask, it has to be said. And, you know, it's just, it was just stunning and you know there was a good reason why i sort of shelled out fairly big bucks to put that one on the shelf it has to be said um the cooper's choice bottling well this is where we started sliding into the big sherry kind of character it it to me less interesting um you know the, the balance just wasn't quite there i mean you know no sulfur it was very clean it was a very good bottling and if you like you know the 18 and so on and so forth he would have probably been more than happy with that um same to a certain extent goes for the duncan taylor bottling again we're in the realm of big sherry um and you know I, it has to be said spring that the distillery well i wouldn't say the distillery character came through on it but it kind of it stood up to it to, as much as it could um but again it was kind of like it just lacked nuance lacked light and shade in my own personal opinion but still you know was an impressive bottling and the Uski again if you don't put water with it it's absolutely fine um again sort of lots of sherry <laughs> which is kind of like you know from from looking at what it was matured in you're going well yep that's what we're going to expect on that particular bottling um uh, but just don't put any water with it um if you're the sort of person that has a sort of like susceptibility to uh, to sulfur because uh, it kind of has an awful lot of it anyway um that's this week's episode of the show in the bag i hope you've enjoyed it um no idea what's going to be happening next week i have a, a couple of uh, things up my sleeve well I would do if I had sleeves. Um, so, yeah, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, so I guess all that's left to say is good afternoon and good drumming.